Hey guys, this is Busy Daddy George. Welcome to the Busy Daddies Do Sci-Fi Podcast. This episode finds me and Kevin once again without Adam, who is still off fighting the intergovernmental, interplanetary, interdimensional, hundred year, thousand year, million year war. I don't know, I've lost track of the details. I just hope he got our cigarettes and Gatorade. See, time and space tend to have very little meaning when you're alone recording with Kevin for long enough, as I think this episode will illuminate a bit further. Just a little reminder that some of the things we do talk about tend to dip into spoiler territory. So for a full list of what might get spoiled, check out the show notes wherever you're listening to us. Also, if you want, you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at BDD Sci-Fi and give our Facebook page a like. Make sure you tell a friend, share us around the internet, write a review on iTunes or wherever. The more people who see us, the more people listen to us, and growing our audience is what we're all about right now. So, thank you, and without further ado... All right. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Listener. Or afternoon. Morning. George and Kevin here. I'm George. We're going to go through that times of the day when they could be listening again thing. Did we already do that? Was it not playful the last time we did it? Because I thought it warmed me up a bit. it was the cuckolds of the heart. Cuckolds of the heart, not the, the <laughs> sub-cuckold the cuckold. area. Is it the, the cuckolds? Cuckold? Because cuckold is, is, cuckold is having is. someone else pegging your wife or something. Well, is it I, the think cuckolds? I think cuckold is, cuckold is larger than that, though. It's not just dominating another person's wife, right? Like, to be cuckold is something entirely <laughs> different. It's not a... You can cuckold somebody without having sex with their spouse. Uh, I was just talking saying. about the cuckolds of the heart, though. I know that's what you were talking that, about. But is that, it went is that not the right word? Uh, no, it's, it's cuckles? the cuckolds. Is it cuckles? The cuckolds. Oh, cuckolds. Cuckolds. C-O-C-C-L-E-S. I'm making that up. Yeah. I don't, I don't, Are you wearing beer cockles? We're beer cockles. <laughs> So are we rolling? We rolling. We're so rolling. what about now the case that you made for doing this intro was something like there needs to be an intro because that's just what you're used to. It's the standard convention. Oh, I'm not used to anything because I don't really listen to these. Okay. But like, right. well, there's usually something. When I usually hear? like a bam 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 bam. The, the being the, the busy daddy science fiction. Well, no matter what we do to start it, it's got to be more interesting than this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> All right, good. We got our intro. Cool. <laughs> What's the speed limit on this road? 65 cockles. <laughs> Go as fast as you want oh, to, man. man. Parsecs. Did you ever, you know, get into that? Like, uh, people got pissed off because... Millennium Falcon is the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, and there's some hardcore nerds who just go, that doesn't make any sense, dude. A parsec is a, is a way to measure distance, no. not time. I've never been in these so realms. You, you can't, a ship can't perform something in less than 12 parsecs, because that's distance. Yeah. Yeah. No. But listener, if you've ever experienced that, uh, right in. Yeah, let us know how you feel yep. about or it. Or email Vicar Stephanie. <clears throat> I uh, and let them know if we should still be talking on the air because they're fun in this thing. Yeah, well, partially. Partially, yeah, I guess. I mean, don't, don't, don't bring up the cell phone. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. <laughs> this is the second week in a row. I know. Look, I love seltzer. I love a really, really right. bubbly Not that beverage. I'm grateful for I'm grateful for water. water. We used to have seltzer. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> Back when, you know, the lady, the Cocos, would bring you seltzer. She would. And she'd free bring pie. me coffee. Remember the free pie times? Remember the free pie times, the man? free pie times. I think it was free pie when, time, but we made it in the times. And it boy, was free pie boy, time. The goose hung high. There was, there was something, uh, there was a magic going on there for a little mm-hmm. while. Well, you know, Until was... they got resentful and started cleaning <laughs> their oil traps on the nights we were there and banging <laughs> Classic, classic episode. Classic, Not only were we, we were faced with having to record it on an iPhone 6, but then... Uh, oh my gosh, that's right. An almost deliberate 
hey, let's get loud oh, was, why the white people... It was aggressive. <laughs> it was aggressive. Recording something. Maybe... I remember Adam Hall's camera equipment, so it'd be three dudes, two dudes eating a pie, two one guy watching pie, me one guy pie, watching. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Believe it or not. I was well, as you know, if you're listening now, you know we will touch sci-fi. Eventually. This episode. Yeah. We Eventually. have. We parsec We parsec Oh, mm-hmm. which by the way, parsecs, the way to come around about to that again is because they're traveling faster than light, it is technically possible to make the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs because distance that, gets dilated. It's like the star you see date me glaze over in Star here? Trek. Listen, you're hanging, you're hanging, man. We're going to pull out of this. No, 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 no. no. We're, 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 in, we're in this now, no, man. Because see, what happens is, what happens is no. you can make the jump to light speed, okay? You're at light speed, all right? Distance is not universal anymore. So what can be 12 parsecs to one ship can be less than 12 parsecs to another ship. So the Millennium Falcon is the ship that made yeah. the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. Did you just Drop debut this the theory? Mic. You just did. Did you just uh, debut oh, this man. theory? No, that's old. That, I read that in like Star Wars. similar. Yeah. Yeah. That's similar to that. Do you not? That space opera thing you got going on, man. Oh, the, that a space <laughs> opera can't not be a book? It can't, dude. And that if you write sense. twenty thousand one, two thousand one space, space opera and sharpie on your freaking movie how is, poster, how is it doesn't count. Not making, a space opera. It's an odyssey because it's not a book. That's what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. All right. Who Star said, Trek. Who Star, said, Trek. Who Star said, Trek is a space who opera. Said Star Trek space operas opera. are movies. See, I don't. Who think, said I they think, weren't? You did. I just think that they they're because they're books. Like, I like think about the line of thought. Okay. We're not talking about like. What is a space opera? We're talking about what gets called space opera are books. I've heard movies called space opera. Bull, what? Star Wars? Star Don't Trek. Start to- oh, Star Trek. Star Trek. That's how this started. That's how this started. Because yeah. I, I saw a review that said that called Star Trek First Contact one of the best space operas since. I think that's someone since. abusing the term. And they shouldn't. I don't really care, honestly. I don't, I don't care. I don't fully care. I don't but fully now care. we're in this. Yeah. Let's get out of this. I'll, I'll, right, the, man? Peter I, F. Hamilton. Peter F. Hamilton. Who? Peter F. <laughs> Hamilton. Peter fucking Hamilton. <laughs> Peter fucking Hamilton. <laughs> it's not. It's a German said. surname. It's not the word. It's not the F word. It's we've fucking, already, fucking Hamilton. <laughs> we've already got Patrick Rothfuss leaving angry voicemails and Jennifer Fang. I, I'm not. I don't know Jennifer it's her. Jennifer Fang. I don't know, know it's her, but someone's throwing eggs at my house. Yeah. All right, which is weird because mm-hmm. we loved that movie. At two thirty p.m. <laughs> I know it's the middle of the <laughs> yeah, afternoon. It doesn't make any sense. No, a.m. <laughs> no, it's the middle of the afternoon. This it's, is it's, bold. It's it's very bold. Bold it's daylight. Like Jennifer Fang, who made a bold, subtle, richly dense, densely rich science fiction movie. Was it densely rich or richly dense? I because sometimes I don't want to be How were we dense? And it was richly. Uh-huh. Sometimes it was how were we dense? How are we dense? Rich densely. Oh man, I don't want to be it is late, folks. For your behavior. we've uh, we've put children to bed. We've worked all day. We've been to the gym. We made it was cooking night for me tonight. I made oatmeal and two other dinners. Nice and uh, oatmeal for tomorrow. Or? Yeah, you get the oatmeal lined up for the week. Um, I made a. I made the two whole dinners, so I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I made uh, some greens tonight and uh, little collard greens. No, 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 just. Uh, by greens, I mean generic green. Vegetable. Oh, Jer- Jersey. This is Jersey speed. Jersey Sorry. speed. Sorry, yeah, yeah. He got the greens from the market. Got some, uh, got some uh, hot dogs. So wrapped them up. Do you mean a salad? Sure I made a salad. You made a salad. Yeah. That's greens. Yeah, sure. Greens is greens is just like a side, tongue. a side salad kind of thing. You make some greens. Collard greens would be like collard greens. Yeah. You know, green I see salad. what you're doing here, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, wait, yeah. Help me out here. It's probably. All yeah. right. Hey. What are they? Are they? Is it a space green? Area okay. Can it be space greens? I don't know, man. That green gonna make that Kessel run? Yeah. Less than twelve oh, God. Oh, God. We that. are bogged down tonight. Man. Peter F. Hamilton. Fucking Hamilton. Peter fucking Hamilton. Okay. <laughs> he wrote a book called The Reality Dysfunction. I started to speak about this book. I'm Seventy-eight pages in. Uh, last episode, I told you I switched to. Michael Yoss, mm-hmm. not Michael Yoss. It's he's Michael just Yoss. Yoss. No, he's oh, Yoss. Okay. I don't know where that Michael came from. Yoss, Michael whose picture Yoss. Yoss, by the way, looks like 
See, don't ruin it. I'm picturing, I'm picturing King Diamond. <laughs> no, no, he's like a chubbier Guns N' Roses man. Oh, okay. He's got a bandana, but he looked like you know he like works out. And so I see this dude who's like a rocker who's typing typing stuff. Anyways, I switched to him because of 78 pages of, of Peter F. Hamilton. I really dug the reality dysfunction. It's just an investment, as I told you. But it's they big, were doing right? some it's, great. They were starting to do some really cool stuff. It's a big book, right? It's, it's like, a thousand pager, and that's just part one. So I'm like, no. I have Woke and Furies in my house. I'm going to go through y'all. So I'm going to go through Woke and Furies mm-hmm. and enjoy some some stuff, and then I'll then I'll go deep. But I might be reading Diamond Age. Diamond Age. Yeah. Next. Yeah. Why'd that ring my bell? I don't know what it was about. And you got started. There's just something that no listener. If you've read Diamond Age, you'll be ahead of us. Because we're going to talk out of our asses about it now. Yeah. Um, somebody had mentioned it on a, uh, on a on a subreddit as it's gone. No. I don't, got, I don't have the memory. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read it though. Well, you know what? I, I looked at it. It looks cool. Um, I was just like, I hope he doesn't think He's funny again in this one. I did not really like how Neil Stevenson came across. Uh, in that. I, I, I hope there's other things. I know you did. Yeah. We, this is where you do that. I think you're really going to love the Yoss thing. I think he's got that kind of starting up too. And like even that book's called A Planet for Rent. I'm like, really? It's not called That's The Reality Dysfunction. Fucking or brilliant. A Planet for Rent. Woke and Fury. Yeah, that's yeah, Thanks for the fish, right? That's that whole so thing long you guys. Thanks for all the fish. Yeah, man. that thing you talk that's about. Yeah. Um, you got to listen to Welcome to Night Vale, man. I want to. You, you would enjoy the hell out of it. They're quick. They're twenty two minutes. Twenty two minutes. Um, twenty two minute episodes. So shorter than a busy daddy do sci fi podcast. The yeah yeah wow. shorter than a typical BDDSF. P. I like that SFP. Oh, you sure. did. You went all podcast. the way. Went all the way. Yeah. I don't want to. I'm, I'm I'm connecting the dots for our listeners here, mm-hmm. right? I'm the good guy .com. on the inside. Oh, God, ah. he went the extra step. This is why Dick yeah. and Stephanie love you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. The, the Welcome to Night Vale is this podcast that is disguising itself as the announcements for a community radio station in a small desert town called Night Vale. And there are some very, very... Um, Standard announcements like uh, running for the PTA this week will be so and so and so and so. But as it goes on, it gets deeper and deeper, and characters keep popping in. Um, in jokes happen, and I love the format for the episode. The episodes are just community announcements, and then at some point he'll go, "I'll take you now to the traffic. Let's look at the traffic." And the traffic is always this really surreal, introspective, like. In one, he's just talking about watching people as they drive and how if the cars were to disappear, we would all look fetal and going seemingly nowhere. Going just very, very, and the guy's voice is so fantastic. Um, and then uh, about 10 minutes later, he'll say, I now take you to the weather. And it's some small band who has sent in their music and they just play every episode a different artist. Um, and that's the and weather. That's the weather. And then they pop back in and he does like a wrap up and there's always a lot of heart and a lot of humor and usually there's a storyline that's leading to something big that gets resolved and um, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so much fun that I actually I started reading. I'm about halfway through the Welcome to Night, Ma- Night Vale novel and it's what we were just talking about. It's a lot of that heart and funny that I love about some like Douglas Adams. When, is it is the novel say the first twenty five episodes transcribed? No, not at Standalone. all. Standalone, totally different story. Totally Does he different have story. bands on his live show that'll play the weather? Yeah, yeah. And there's a a band called Disparition who does all the it's all original music, um, atmospheric music for the show, cool. and really really cool stuff. Uh, I I just I I'm four years too late. This podcast has been. I was on about for, to say I think we're talking yeah. about Night Vale. Like we're from 2012. Yeah, yeah. It's been on for four years, and uh, I'm I love it. It's fantastic. But um, I've been chewing through it the last couple months, man. But it's really, really good. It's really fun.
funny. I'm actually going to see them uh, this Friday at the Orpheum in Los Angeles, and I'm really looking forward to it, man. But uh, yeah, welcome cool. to Night Vale, dude. Did um, well, well written is I think the best thing about it. It's just really, really well written, really clever. I think some people say too clever for its own good. I hate that complaint. Like when see when someone says like, "Oh, that show takes itself too seriously." It's like, what the hell does that mean? Well, you know? is, is, <laughs> is is Garrison Keillor too clever for his own good? Like, because oh. I, I think of like Wobegon yeah. when, when you talk about the Night Vale setup. <clears throat> You're not far off. You're not take take Wobegon, toss in tons of sci-fi and you know like strange things just happen in this town there is um their high school football quarterback starts growing a second head and Mm -hmm. it's completely accepted and the mother likes the second head more than she likes the first head so when she opts for a head removal she has the first one taken off you know and the second head only speaks russian so he can't speak back to her you know like it's it's shit like that that Mm -hmm. like i love and find really endearing um, that some people might like go, oh, it's just easy. It's like throw stuff against the wall and just see what the fuck sticks, you know? Right. Um, right. But the stuff they're throwing against the wall is fantastic. So, um, yeah, man. Welcome well, to that. Not now. that you should spend your time listening to that when you could be listening to us. No, but, no, no. Uh, I yeah, figured. You wouldn't, wouldn't want to listen to that until you were through listening to I figured what you run. do is, you know, you. Um, get a really really quiet saturday afternoon mm-hmm. you listen to us yeah if you got the time mm-hmm. plug in a little little night veil vale. vale. maybe yeah. maybe maybe stop and listen to some jazz in between mm-hmm. bdd really, like really spread out and enjoy your time yeah take your time man kids got to nap sometime for. yeah right yep don't care how old they are quiet time is a good thing for any mm-hmm. child <laughs> A quiet then, time. <laughs> Pop Let's in the room. Take a moment. Take a take silence a silence quick... here. Just listen to that. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Just a little quiet time. Just a little quiet time. Just, uh, just a little. Just, 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 just try to take a moment to. Why don't you lay down? Just relax a bit. Lay down. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna lock the just door. Just find quietness. I'm gonna turn the heat up. <laughs> What's this host Put doing little... in my car window? Oh wait, I am feeling great. Feeling really good, man. Yeah. You know, it's the moment before Ooh. the oxygen fully leaves the yeah. brain that you're really looking That's forward to. You see the light. That's why you need yeah. that lemon to bite on. <laughs> Don't tell me there's a lemon. Are you kidding me? You're you sick. never heard about no. that? No. You never heard about the lemon you need? To break what yourself do you mean from when you the... Google how to kill yourself in no, a car? No, no. I, I, this actually came about from an episode of Six Feet Under. Uh, there's some dude who is into autoerotic asphyxiation. And uh, you got to keep a lemon in your mouth so that when the oxygen leaves your brain, your bite reflex reacts. The, the citrus from the lemon wakes you up and you note it. And you open the door it. and roll out of the car? Or yeah. does this have nothing to do with the exhaust? No, no, we're done it? with the exhaust now. Now we're on to choking yourself and <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> well, you got a stranglehold. Dude, on speaking your of. Lemon zest. <laughs> Man from Earth. Man from Earth. You, you've touched on it a little bit and when you did your solo act. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what I said. I think you just kind of left it, right? I, th- to, we, I said we would have talked would have about have it. So here we it. sit, yeah, to talk about it. Yeah, I liked I, it, man. It was great. It was good. It was really quiet. It started though. It first of all, the greatest American heroes in it, whatever his name is, and he shows up. Uh, there is a man, and he's retiring. He's moving on from his professorship. His name is John Oldman. John Oldman, one of many puns, which he addresses as puns as mm-hmm. he as he lets it go. Um, and his colleagues are there to help him pack up his cabin before he goes. And uh, he goes out on a limb and says, I'm a caveman. I somehow haven't died. And uh, the lead-ups, Nora and I were watching it, and she was like, oh my God, this is... Are you, really like it it seems really 
shitty. It's like a shitty movie. Yeah. At the same yeah. time, <clears throat> it's it is good. It is poorly it's like, made. It's like you it, start it, to it, rationalize. It, the brain goes, yeah. "This is probably be better as a play. This probably was a play, right?" You you start to do that kind I of. I don't. Shit. I don't know, but I don't think it was. Because um, oh, I, I, I got the same but feeling. But this person was such a shitty movie writer yeah. that it made it seem like a play to anyone who was watching the movie because your mind can't can't it, reconcile it. it. It made me go like, yeah, that this this was clearly a play that he probably performed on some like little theater in Los Angeles, and then just said, hey, let's get a couple guys together and make this into a fucking movie. I do recognize like a lot of the actors in it, um, yet there there's nobody who like you know made it made it like the guy who played Neelix in Star Trek. Um, Enterprises in it and mm-hmm. shit like that, or no Star Trek. Well, the greatest American hero, the blonde guy blonde from the eighties show, yeah, from the eighties show, greatest American hero, still barely Bruce acting Davidson. out of that paper bag that they. His name is Bruce in. Davidson. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it was good. It was, um, but the production value is. It looks like an after-school special. But what it like. does, what I liked about it, is it settled in. You just don't really care anymore. It's ten people. It's like you're like what are you seven gonna, guys sitting around yeah, a fire. You you're know, do what, yeah. let's just hear your story. I don't really care how you couch this thing. And you've got somebody from every different academic discipline, pretty much. Like you've got a biologist, um, you've got a paleontologist. You've got I think the it was one, one woman. Is she religious studies or is that like a? She's just a, a religious. She's person. just a religious person. Okay. Um, and then the psych. Psychology, psychology professor, is professor called in to sort of size him up because he extends this truth. He says, "I have to, I have to bail about every ten years when people realize I'm not aging." Mm-hmm. Um, so you're kind of left with the idea of like, "All right, is I mean, you know, you you know, he's not crazy. It doesn't come across like he's crazy, but is he taking these guys for a ride, or is he completely?" I never the even truth? thought that. I'm, I I'm never. Listen, yeah. I'm listening to a guy. Tell some people the truth, and, trying and, to, yeah. and they're freaking. They they go through weird stages of accepting it and anger, and on <clears throat> in a risky part of it, he actually says he was Jesus. Yes, which uh, we know. Well, I could have settled for an apostle. Uh, that or something was where it started to kind of fall off the tracks for me was the quick. Not only am I Jesus, also. The fucking psychology professor is one of his sons. Like, well, I like that. I, I, I like didn't. that. I was oh, like, what? We he, just spoiled that. For does you. he follow no. his sons around, or is that that was the... mere coincidence that the it his one of John Oldman? John Oldman taught at Harvard. Harvard, I think. When he and he was taught a school. psychology class. Yeah. And this man was one of his students. Or one of his students had a son, and that man was his son. I forget how That man was down. his son. The psychology professor was his son. I didn't I thought it was a tangent that they were connected. I didn't know that they that was son. That was his that son. They talk maybe. about they talk about the dog the family dog and I just thought like he had a okay, and that's what I thought that he, the student the well John Oldman's student was a woman who had a kid. And he knew the student really well. And he knew that he was reminiscing about her. And he so happened to coincidentally connect the dots for the guy who was the most skeptical. And he breaks down and cries. No, because he's, he says at one point, like, little so-and-so, always cold. You know? Like, like he knew him on a, on a per- maybe, I, maybe, Maybe you're right, and I'm misremembering this. Because for me, that was a big, he like... He knew him in an intimate way. This fell, this fell to pieces the moment this was this guy's son. They never explicitly say... Yeah, he's my son. Okay, um, but that's what I got from it. And maybe now I should probably go back and rewatch it. But uh, or listener, or listener, write in and let us know. Let um, us know um, what you got from that. Whoever wrote and directed, I don't know why I'm imagining it's the same person, but um, the play. Yeah, the play. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a series of shorts written by a guy. We looked this up watching the movie, um, and They're making a sequel. But they are. Yeah called plasticine i believe so i don't know if it'll be like a him in the future is no like, in the back like him in the uh, plasticine era which will be riveting it'll yeah, be it'll seven be, people yeah. sitting around a fire and they'll be like oh yeah. hey oh like, hey guys i'm a caveman yeah. yeah we know we all are dude yeah Relax. i learned to shave <laughs> learn to shave i'll teach you, you. guys didn't 
fucking cavemen. Yeah. Why can't you be cool I'm like watching. me? But um, I yeah, I, I would check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good. I'm glad I saw it. I have shown it to other people, and um, like in a oh, you should watch this, you know, mm-hmm. like and uh, it has not been enjoyed by didn't, other people. No, I think it. I think that I think that movie rings a very particular bell. Like you've got to. It's one of those open sesame movies where you got to kind of know the magic word. You got to sort of be willing to just get past. Um, this this looks kind of shitty. It's one of like, I would say why I love old Doctor Who. The old Doctor Who looks terrible. Yeah. Um, but the story is good. Yeah. So I see past the, you know, coffee can monster, and just kind of embrace the sci-fi craziness yeah. of it you know yeah i mean for me i was there on my couch i start to get a little bored i nod out the lemon that's in my mouth i bite oh, on it god. wakes me up thank and, god you always keep that lemon and lemon <laughs> zest and there the magic words and in the movie it worked for me what did that. uh what did nora think of it did she stop watching it? she 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 scoffed and then she was working so she heard it and then she came and started watching it because and she'd go oh my god but she she stayed through it, and I don't think she weighed in on it. But it it kept her attention, so I think it was better than she thought. Because at first she's like, "Are you really watching this, dude? Are you, yeah, you're gonna watch this?" And I was like, "I don't really care. I'm a busy daddy. I was fo- I folded a lot of laundry and watched it. Like, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna watch Man from yeah. Earth. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm doing." Thanks to Decipher Sci-Fi, by the way. Decipher Sci-Fi, you guys had uh, had seen that movie and talked about it, and um, and then I followed up and watched it. So that's how we do this. We turn each other on, man. That's it. You know, podcasts and sci-fi people, we're always looking for that name or that writer or that that book or that series or that show. And, you know, you never know what's going to hit and, and you're going to run with. And and, uh, and then the world is there. It's pretty good stuff. All right, man. We are going to try to get Adam back for a little bit. I mean, he's got to have a vacation at some point, right? I think. I don't know. Oh, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know how many people he's killed? Well. Did you ever see, did you ever read the paper? The paper? He's all over it. That one? Yeah. No. It's yeah. weird. Adam Haynes, I, man. Why are you talking about that, man? Well, they're going to find out <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> Who? Them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They. 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 The ones who... Mm-hmm. The gravy killed Kenneth. Gravy taker. <laughs> did we? Did we? Yeah. Did we lose that bit? Or? I don't know if we lost that bit. Was it ever there? I know. Was that last? <laughs> I can't. I can't remember. We're crumbling. Man, We're crumbling. This is exactly it's what it's like when I'm talking to Vic. Like he just he he turns around, he leaves, it's gone. Yeah. In and out. In it's and out. It's gone. Something's weird about that dude. Do you ever think he looks like that guy from the Shield? The head cop, the baldy guy. The, um, Michael, the, the guy who played the thing. Yeah. Did he play the thing also? Oh, yeah. Those were terrible. Weird. In Fantastic Four. He certainly comes off yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I think somebody saw him and were like, oh my god, that guy looks like the thing. Then, cha-ching! <laughs> hey, I'm the thing! Hey! I'm the thing! I'll bust your face! You know what? <laughs> you know what? It was not, it was not <laughs> unlike that at all. It was just, hey, I'm the thing. Really? Yeah. Does the thing even talk? Oh yeah. I don't even I don't know. Yeah. From Fantastic Four, the rock is guy. Is he highly literate? Is no, he, no. No. So he's like a. Rock. He's an astronaut. I mean, he, he's a pilot. He can fly, he can, yeah. So he's he's smarter than me then. Well, he can fly. Boy, whoa, hey, give I mean, yourself I mean, some I credit, I mean, man. Like, I mean, I guess I could be taught to fly a spaceship. Sure. Sure, you could, or Kevin. Generation <laughs> shit. Sure, you <laughs> sure could. You, could. you can. You know what? You want to be a firefighter or an astronaut or any of that you stuff. You can do anything you, just, you want to do, you Kevin. You can, yeah. You're still a young fella. You can be yeah. president of the United States. Yeah. Were you born in this country? No. No, no. Were you born on this planet? No. Okay. No. Whoa, hey. All right. Well, listener, I'm going to say check out Man from Earth. I, I think that's like eternally available on Netflix. Yes. You know, likely. Uh, that's where I saw it, and that was like five, six years ago. Um, when Netflix like first came around, so um, you saw that you're you're speaking about all this from five or six years ago, or have you rewatched? 
I've got that kind of crazy monkey memory when it comes no, to things No, you don't, because that man yeah. wasn't his son. No, you make you need to go back and yeah, yeah. No, what the? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, man. That was listener, his son. Listener, there's a deal. There's something to be settled here. It was his son. There's something to be settled. I, I mean, I, I have a really good memory with things that I love. Like I can kind of just. You've already remember. said in this episode that maybe you remember remembered it incorrectly. Oh, or yeah, did I just inspire a, doubt? But no, you just inspired doubt by, by tossing that in there. But I'm I'm like ninety five percent. I just don't want to embarrass you in front of all our listeners. Is basically what it boils down to. Why would I be embarrassed? I'm okay with that. If it was, then that movie is shittier. It's, that's the thing is I kind of don't want it to be shittier. So when you started spinning the whole elusive. the whole like oh no he was just the kid of the student I was kind of like oh, okay maybe that ending didn't suck. Then. Well okay but okay BS provocative stuff. He goes up and he gets challenged by the paleontologist, and there's a cool just arguments, and he explains like how like as a caveman we didn't really know, man, and it just got kind of dusty and cloudy. Yeah. And it was crazy, and in hindsight, I now know I've learned what that what was going that's, on. But that's the thing know. I loved about. And that was it. cool, but but he's, he he has a love interest, and uh, he's always left his love interest behind every ten years, and. Guess what happens at the end of this movie? He says, come on. In the night. He says, come on, get in the truck. Even though for thousands of years, <laughs> this love thing hasn't been working, and I've tried to tell you that, yeah. you're so clingy, yeah. that you know what? Just get in the truck. Get in the for truck. you, it'll work. Let's go to After my... After all, I have been Jesus. Some <laughs> shit can happen. Uh, you know, I don't know why I didn't think of this before or earlier. Let's go to my dead son's funeral. Yeah. Because he, he mentions cause he that. Dies. Yeah. <laughs> he fucking dies. You're my father. Oh! That's, that's, what I'm saying. that's why that movie started to The Wilford Grimley look alike, man. <laughs> it's all of a sudden he's like, he's like, you were not my, my father. father. Oh! And then he just dies. That guy had high blood pressure the whole time. He pulls a gun. He did. He pulls on a the gun, gun on, on the him. <laughs> you better die. Like he he won't at one point he's like say I have a gun in my pocket he's doing the finger yeah. in the pocket thing and then you find then out later that, he's double blinds him because he really find out that gun. his wife yeah. has died like yesterday yeah <laughs> he is tense man he is, so he is tense is I can't feel this you're not Jesus you're not my father oh. it's probably not probably not the situation that that guy should be in right now is finding why out. why <laughs> greatest American hero call him because they get worried they're like you know what you know who can solve this. The, the, the more the grieving psychology <laughs> professor grieving psychology hey man professor. I know some shit's going down in your pad man what did you do here Jesus <laughs> hey you could it'd be really cool if you left your gun at home <laughs> do you have guns we didn't know uh, we have no idea what you're planning to do to make this man tell the truth <laughs> well, come on down we're having pizza and beer it's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Oh, you can't eat pizza. Try, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The triglycerides. Yeah. Okay. Oh God. You're gonna be okay, pal. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead. All right, that's it for us. Good night. Good night. All right. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe to Busy Daddies Do Sci-Fi on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you listen, please take the time to rate and review. Reviews keep us on the charts, and that way people can find us. You can follow us at BDD Sci-Fi on Twitter and Instagram, or if you want to learn more about the Busy Daddies, check out BDDSciFi.com. Thanks for listening, and see you every other Wednesday.